what's going on y'all so look i'm gonna see how this goes and see how many you know things i can get into it but this excuse me was gonna be a q a uh another q a video i told y'all do these like once or twice a month so we about to do and i just want to touch on some other stuff at the very beginning give y'all a little what it is because it really wasn't nothing that was popping that really needed to be talked about and stuff for a few things and one of those was the case with the officer at the school the what is it spring valley high school in uh, south carolina officer ben fields okay so basically i seen this video and it was a 15 seconds clip of this officer literally talking to this girl black girl you know of course everybody want to um put that out there but she was just sitting there in her chair like this girl I didn't see nothing else going on, and next thing you know, he was all on the desk like this, and then he charged at her and just yanks her out the chair. It's like he overturned the desk while she was still in the desk, and then pulled her out, and it was just body slammed her and all this stuff. It was just graphic. He did too much. Did too much, and it was irking me that, you know, because at first, I didn't want to say nothing about it because I was like, what? Where's the rest of the video? I wanted, I was one of the ones that wanted to be like, where's the rest of the video? Because I want to know exactly what happened before I start giving my opinion. But regardless of what happened before and what was said, it's clear to say that it was too much force that was being used, okay? That was not necessary. That one was a child. Two was a female. Three, she was just sitting there. Four, you are a grown-ass man. You weigh more than this girl, and you did way too fucking much, okay, Mr. Benfield, because you are no longer an officer. They took his ass out, put him on administrative, uh, administrative leave, and then the sheriff today came out and said, let me tell you something. I heard about what was going on, and when I finally seen this video, I was disgusted. And it, it irked me so much when I seen the video, and you had the teacher standing there, and I think it was somebody else in the classroom standing there, too. And they didn't do nothing. And the students were sitting there in shock. Because they like, hell, if I sit up and stay something, he going to do the same shit to me. Mind you, this police officer has a reputation of doing shit like this. You know, being aggressive and, you know, coming after people. And it's just irritating. It was just irritating. And when I read the article today about how um, they finally went on ahead and fired the cop. They said that, and he got a case of something pending against him for excessive force and, you know, pepper spraying the hell out of somebody who wasn't even doing nothing and just being too fucking much. These cops, come on now. Come on now. And then I seen this clip online and this Uncle Tom ass police officer, black man talking about some, um, there is no police brutality going on in this country no more. We got rid of that in the 60s. And Obama is out here uh, putting that out there, trying to incite all this violence and stuff. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. This police brutality right here, this is taking advantage of your power right here, okay? Then somebody else got shot, you know, up in Ferguson who was not resisting and all that stuff. Child, and that literally just happened. I'm just sitting here like, so... You do all this because the girl took out her cell phone. Mind you, the teacher and the vice principal said the actions of the cop was appropriate. And I'm sitting here like, how dare you let that come out your mouth? And I hope you don't have kids. Because everybody that want to sit here and say what the cop did was cool, um, the girl should have complied and all this stuff. Let me just tell y'all how this shit work. Yes, there is this thing called respect. And that's this thing called you're supposed to do what the authorities say. But there also is a procedure that goes on with this stuff. You do not put your hands. And I've been in school where we had security guards. And, you know, we had some kids that been disruptive in the classroom. And, you know, they want to do stuff. And unless they are touched by it, the, the security guard or whoever is being touched by this kid, they don't put their hands on them like that. Okay, that girl didn't kick him. That girl didn't get up and push him to even deserve all of that. I don't give a damn if she wouldn't get up out that seat or not. You go call the parents or whatever. Okay, that's what you fucking do. You don't put your hands on nobody else's child. And if you're going to put your hands on a child like that, you don't do what you did. Okay, that was too much. And, oh, I was seeing this on Twitter. Oh, she should have complied. Just complied. And somebody, I literally had to mute them because they said this stuff. And I was just really sitting here like, 
I don't saying I don't care what she did or whatever, you know, and yeah, I don't feel sorry because she got, you know, what happened to her. And I'm just sitting here like, oh, so if it was you and you respectfully complied, how do we know if she would have got her ass up, it still wouldn't have went the same way? We don't know. Okay. And I'm just sitting here like, put yourself in that position. And everybody is saying, oh, well, she got what she deserved. I hope you, your child don't ever have to go through nothing like that. And at this point in time, I'm on the fence to see if it's about race or whatever. Because then, of course, they want to throw in there that he got a black girlfriend or whatever. I don't care. But I've seen white kids get thrown around like this. I've seen Hispanics and I've seen many other people who get, you know, victimized by the cops and do some shit like this. But I don't know, you know, y'all probably put down that that race is a factor, but... It could be, but still, all I saw was excessive force being used on a student, on a student, on a child. And what makes the story even more fucked up is this girl is a recent orphan, 16 years old. He, they literally moved her laptop to another table because he knew what he was going to do. Okay, all because she had a phone out for a quick second. She wouldn't get up talking about something she disrupted in the class or whatever because she looked at her phone like, girl, okay, you know, and there's some schools that I be looking at shit. Some of these schools nowadays, kids be sitting there listening to their iPods and their iPads and their phones and all this stuff doing class and everything. And when I was in school, you couldn't do none of that because they would take your phone. But, you know, she was just sitting there. She peacefully, from what I saw in the video, from what we saw, she peacefully resisted. She wasn't being a disturbance. Y'all caused the disturbance if you ask me. You know, if it was that big and bad of an um, issue, call the parent. All right. But you don't put your hands on nobody child like that. And then um, when they first took him out, they were trying to say she ain't had no injury. She just had a rug burn on her forehead. Girl, that girl got a broken arm. Neck and back problems right about now. Plus that rug burn on her forehead. I said a rug burn on her forehead. Girl, ain't nobody got time for this. Now let me tell you something. When I was in school, I had an incident where a teacher wouldn't let me go to the bathroom. Okay? I'm a female and, you know, you guys want something. They think I'm a fucking female. I'm a woman. All right? And you don't know what's going on. And she was a woman too, which threw me out. You don't know if it would have been, it was, if it was my time of the month or if some shit was just really going on. And I'm like, damn, bitch, let me go to the bathroom. She said no. And she gave me attitude and all that shit. And I said, fuck this shit. And I got up and walked out. You damn right I did. Call my parents. And every time somebody want to threaten me, I, 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 I used to wish somebody threatened me and say, I'm going to call your parents. I'd be like, okay, you can reach her at 312, so-and-so, and so-and-so. That's her work number. Do you want the cell phone number? Because you probably get her directly right then and there. That's me. All right? Um, Don't threaten me like that. But, yeah, she should have probably just went on ahead and got up. Okay? Ain't nobody denying that. But all of that force and shit was not necessary. You... <sighs> That was not fucking necessary. And then what irked me, you're going to charge her with disorderly conduct and all that stuff and being a disruption to the class. And then it took for another female black student to get up and say, what the fuck are y'all doing? This is too fucking much to speak out because the teachers, the adults in the class wasn't doing it. And of course, this other student, she got charged too and released to her parents. And I said... And my thing is, so if you getting pissed off at the fact that she had her cell phone out for a quick second, what about the student who actually filmed this? Did they get in trouble for having the tape out and putting it out there and having the phone out? Come on, let's do fair. Let's do, like, it just, it just irked me. It was disgusting. But y'all tell me how y'all feel about that. Um, Black China. First of all, let me get this little stupid shit out the way. Chloe and Lamar, they not getting back together. Thank God. Okay, we don't care. You know, um, Nene, she made a surprise, quote unquote, appearance on The Real Housewives of Atlanta when they went on a trip to Jamaica. Now, I don't know if it just happened now and they currently filming because I'm like, if it was a surprise, then how was it a surprise? Because we all know now, like, okay, so was this already in the process and they just now leaked it out and I heard that she's going to be making some more appearances. I mean, Nene, do what you got to do. I already knew she wasn't 
going stray far away from Real Housewives. Hell, if the coin is there and they offering, you know, a certain amount of money just to do a couple appearances, hey, why the fuck not, okay? And I can't even hate on NeNe at this point because NeNe is back on Broadway. She finna play Mama in Chicago. So, I mean, bitch, do your shit, okay? Do your shit. I may not like you really like that no more, but I can't hate on what you're doing now. You know, you, you, you're doing your shit. Um, Halle Berry filing for divorce. This is like her third divorce from um actor Olivier Martinez. Fine ass motherfucker. But it was just too much fineness between them and they just had to split. I just don't know. Halle girl, I was here with Terry McMillan had tweeted and said, girl, don't get married again. Give up on marriage. I mean, Elizabeth Taylor got married eight times and twice to one of the same to the same man twice or something like that. Girl, you do what makes you happy, but obviously something in your milk ain't clean because your relationships don't last. But who am I the judge? So, hey, at least they say it's, you know, amicable and stuff like that. Um, Also, Black China, girl, you stupid. You are stupid as hell. Anybody that get they pers- a person name tattooed on them and especially right out the gate of you, you know, talking to that person, you're dumb. So Sierra's birthday was this past weekend or whatever, and all of a sudden the internet went a roar because, you know, they was talking about the costumes and stuff. I ain't give a fuck, okay? Beyonce was there, fine. We know why Beyonce was there because all of them, y'all be making jokes. I ain't even finna shade Sierra, but most likely it was because, you know, Kelly and Lala, they all friends with Sierra. So, you know, if she wanted to come, she can come. It is what it is. I don't see the big deal about it, but hey, you know, everybody look nice. Sierra look nice. Russell look nice. Love Future look nice. Everybody look nice. Um, so this day, Black China wants to post on um, Instagram a picture of a tattoo saying Future. And let me tell you something. Y'all some dumb bitches, okay? Let me just tell y'all this, because we already know China and Future was um kicking it for a couple of weeks right and then all of a sudden you want to post this come to find out she had already had that tattoo for a couple of weeks already she just decided to post it on sierra birthday i don't know if that was coincidence or was that shade or what was the message you know y'all shady as fuck for putting in her own comments talking about some <laughs> was you the one with the uh brazilian head and the silicone ass or whatever that she was cheating the lyrics to that song <laughs> Y'all petty. Y'all petty. But I was thinking like, well, was she? You know? And it's a get back? I don't get it, but okay. And um, then China putting up a video of her singing a verse in, um, you know, future songs or whatever that actually says on about fucking with China. And I said, okay, girl, you think you, um, we all looking at you like you stupid as fuck, okay? Don't ever get no man tat name. No, don't get no man, nobody name tattoo on you, man or woman. No, I'm not here for that shit. You can, unless, unless you put the initials and you can say, bitch, when the shit don't work and you can say, well, this stands for this, okay? Not that person. But other than that, don't do that. Because then you'll be the one sitting here looking stupid as fuck. Because she looking stupid as fuck now. Because now um, Future came out saying, hey, I'm not in a relationship with nobody. I'm single. I'm here for my fans. And that's it. And then somebody said, you know, China then took them two things down off her thing. I said, I know. You're stupid. Because he showing sure up ain't reaching out there getting um, tattoos of you. And then Milan Christopher talking about some. This was stupid, girl. I got to talk to my homegirl, putting this nigga name on him, on her and all this stuff. And I said, coming from the motherfucker who got M&M, the same tattoo as your ex-boo mouths, because they going through their shit. I can't stand these queens. I thought I was going to really like them just because they was gay and, you know, see how this play out. But I think, you know, a lot of people was like at the beginning, hmm, you trying to exploit this shit. And I really feel like it because now you're doing interviews everywhere as a quote unquote couple. But then you're arguing on Instagram, putting people shit out. Milan going at Miles basically saying he was doing all this shit as a friend and basically trying to put it out there that Miles been fucking around with niggas for a minute and then just trying to defend, talking about he put doing this stuff for fame and all this shit, and I was just like, I just, and then you go and doing interviews about being 
out in hip hop or whatever, don't nobody care. I really, I'm gonna be honest. I was here and I'm here for my gay brothers and sisters, you know, being themselves, but y'all parading this stuff like we really care. Like, this is something new. It's not new. And that's why it's coming out very, like, exploitive. That's what it feel like. Like, come on, can we move on with something else? But, um, anyway, you lost China. You stupid. And then people talk about something. How you know that she's talking about future? I mean, future is a word. Girl, get the fuck out of here. And if that's what she want to do, well, if she want to look stupid, she is looking stupid. Let her look stupid because that's what's going on. Let's get on to this before I get into the little Q&A stuff. Because I might, I don't know if, if Scandal and How to Get Away with Murder comes on tomorrow. I'm going to just put the American Horror Story in with that because and give y'all a full, full video. Um... Because, um, Empire don't come on tonight because of the fucking World Series. But that means I get to watch Blackish at the right time. And make sure y'all check out, um, Shantae Moore's Unsung. It's coming on tonight too at 7 o'clock um, on TV One. And, um, this Philly boxer I never heard of named Yosef or Yusef, um, Mac. Girl. Mr. Yusef. Can you come forward for a minute because we need to get to the bottom of this and we need to tell you that quit. you're not fooling nobody. You're not fooling nobody. You coming out talking about some, you know, you got 10 kids and you a womanizer, you a hoe monger and all this. Okay, you can be a hoe and still be liking dick and bitches at the same time, all right? Just put it out there that you bisexual and move the fuck on. Talking about some he was drugged when he did this gay porn that's about to come out. And I seen a clip of it. He was like, so I went and I was hard on my luck and I needed some money. And so I went up there and I seen all these girls. So I'm thinking that it's going to be a regular porn, like straight porn. Because I'm seeing all these women and stuff. And then they was like, okay, you need this pill and gave me something to drink. And I was like, okay, fine. I ate it and I drank it and all that stuff. And next thing you know, I don't remember much after that. And now I'm hearing that I'm in this gay porn with two other dudes. <sighs> Now, I don't know how people, everybody react when they own drugs and stuff and when they drugs and all that stuff. Baby, you was given the performance of a lifetime, okay, in that. And I seen the clip. I seen the preview. You were taking it. You were giving it. You was kissing. You was all into it, okay? And you posed for it, bitch. Don't, don't try it, all right? And it's on down, Dog Pound USA. Dog Pound. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure I didn't seen you on some other shit on my Vista. God damn, bitch. Just be gay and bisexual with it. Gay for fucking pay. Come on now. I would rather you say the truth than to say a stupid ass lie like this. Because ain't no ain't no coming back from this shit. Like, you lying? Come on. And I'm looking at it like, nigga, that dick slid all up in you too easily. Okay? Like, you didn't have this dick before. Okay? You a verse bottom. All right? You, you take it and you can give it. Okay? Let's just say that. Because that's what you was doing in the video. Ain't nobody buying this shit that you was drugged. Nigga, you took the dick and you gave the dick and you loved it. Okay? Moving on. You needed the cash. Let's just put it out there. All right? Fuck out of here. But, um... Anyway, let's get on to the question and answer part of this video. Hopefully, I get through all this and it don't take too long. Um, I'm going to see. Because some of these questions are redundant. So, we'll see. Let me put it out there. Let me put it out there. Hopefully, y'all get to this part of the video. The Blackout 2016. Yes, we are doing it again. And we are going to Vegas. May 19th to the 22nd. I'm telling you now. I put it on my Instagram. I put it on my Facebook. I'm telling you now on this video. I will be keep going. Um, reiterating it. And um, make sure y'all. We're telling you now. So you can go ahead and start saving up. Okay. It's around income tax season. So y'all got a little change. It's probably going to be left over from the bills. That y'all going to use y'all income tax check. You know on. You know Set a couple of hundreds or something, you know, 500 aside or whatever if you can. And put your vacation days in because you know the vacation day is going to start over in January. So put that shit in. And we're just letting y'all know, May 19th to the 22nd in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay? But more details will be coming out soon. And, um, yeah, just keep a lookout and keep tuning in to the um, Blackout page on Facebook and Scorpion page on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and same thing with Sweet Edition and any of us YouTubers that was the main focus last uh this past blackout. 
So I hope that answered y'all questions on that. Yes, we are doing it. I am glad, you know, I get to go to Vegas. I haven't been to Vegas. I've been to LA. When I've been to Hollywood, I want to go to Vegas. Well, I've been in Beverly Hills with the rich white folks. <laughs> I go to the desert with Vegas. I don't give a fuck this time. I ain't finna let shit stop me. I ain't finna let my mind be worried or whatever. I'm getting, bitch, let me get a Southwest ticket. Put some money down. I already know that shit. But, um, yeah, get your money up because Vegas ain't cheap too. But moving on, Q&A. So let's go. Pet peeves. Let me see, can I do five? Or let me see the much I can do. I can't stand when... I said this before, like sound and stuff. Ugh, like what? And I, that's one. If your voice is annoying to me, it's a pet peeve. If you sitting there eating and you making all this food noise when you eating shit, that's a pet peeve. When you just, when your body just be making noises, period, that's a fucking pet peeve. If your, uh, your attitude is fucked, that's a goddamn pet peeve. If you don't, you know, your hygiene ain't right. That's a pet peeve. Like, how can you come outside looking like this? I just... Annoying people in general is a pet peeve of mine. I just got so many that will pop up. But those are the main ones. Like, I literally cannot... The sound and stuff. Because sometimes sound disgusts me. And if you sitting there, you making all this sound, eating and stuff. Why? <laughs> why? Close your motherfucking mouth and your throat sometimes. I don't want to hear that. But, um... <laughs> Favorite movies, my favorite movies, okay, we got to get them hood classes in there, okay, everybody like Baby Boy, we like Players Club, um, The Wiz is one of my top five favorite movies, um, Sound of Music, yes, I love musicals and stuff like that, Mary Poppins, because a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down, The Lion King, you know, The King has returned, I love it, I love it, Little Mermaid. Little fucking mermaid. Till I die. It's gonna be Little Mermaid. Okay? Um any other movies that's been out like it's so like I just I just I just named some kid movies and stuff like that, but I don't really have a favorite favorite. If I do, it'll come to me. But like Players Club, Boys in the Hood, Poetic Justice, anything about John Singleton, I love it. I love his movies and stuff like that. Um I just get movies that I like to watch. What y'all favorite movies are? Um, fuck, Mary kill. Girl, you gonna get your ass knocked the fuck out if you give me one of these one more time. And then keep giving me the ones that you know I'm gonna be up here struggling. You be trying it. But okay, I'm gonna do it. Fuck, Mary kill. Janet Jackson, Taraji P. Henson, and Rihanna. Okay, of course, without a doubt, I married Janet Jackson because, first of all, y'all already know how I feel about her. And, bitch, if you get sick and cancel next week because I'm supposed to be at your show on Wednesday, it's going to be one. I'm going to be on this bitch reading the fuck out of you, and I will be at the reschedule day still, too. Okay? But, um, Janet is bae, for real. Okay, so... She's a legend in the game. She got her own money so she can take care of me and wipe out all my student loans. Y'all know I'm hustling. I'm trying to get somebody. I keep saying this in videos. I know y'all like if she mentioned student loans one more time, bitch, one of y'all come over here and pay her shit. That's, yeah, I'm trying to get somebody to do that. And, you know, she's an older woman and I just, well, all these hoes older except for, um, Rihanna. But, hmm. So that's that. Taraji, see, it's a toss up because I don't want to kill nobody because Taraji and Rihanna, y'all already know I want to smoke blunt with Rihanna. I don't want to, so I kill Rihanna. I kill, but then again, I probably, you know, just fuck Rihanna just for the fun of it and then we smoke a blunt at a, a, afterwards and we probably be that one time thing and we be good homegirls after that, you know, we get that shit out the way and then we just smoke blunts and shit, you know, get me on that shit. And then Taraji, if I kill her, but she seemed like a cool ass homegirl too. I just don't fucking know. I ain't killing nobody. I fuck both of them, okay? But I marry Janet Jackson. There we fucking go. I make the rules to this shit. <laughs> fuck that. Mom, when did you come out to your family? I came out when I was 18. 
um, after I graduated from high school. The way that I did it, I sent a text message to my mom. My uncle was the first one that knew. First of all, he knew because he took my phone. He was using my phone for something. And somebody sent me a picture of a vagina or some shit. And it was a bare naked ass, clean shaven vagina. And I was just like, he was like, so what the fuck is this? And I said, I don't know. Some bitch trying to just talk to me. I don't get it, but okay. He was like, bitch, you gay. And I was like, okay, yeah. Because he gay and he do. He was like, motherfucker, I knew. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. So I was kind of scared to tell my mom and all that stuff. So basically, it was weighing down on me. So I just said, fuck it. Let me send her a text message. I literally sent her a text message and said, I was bisexual. And she was like, well, if you bisexual, which one do you prefer more? I lied and said, I'm leaning over towards the dudes more, but I do like women's. But the fact of the matter is, no, that's not it. And, you know, so I just said, fucking mom, I'm gay. I'm gay as shit. She met my girlfriend and all that stuff. And it is what it is. I mean, I don't think she really liked the fact that I'm gay, but she respected it. And she don't say nothing negative about it. And it is what it is. I ain't never had one of those parents that, oh my God, uh, why are you doing that? And I'm going to disown you and I don't love you and all this stuff because you this. And if you're going to be this, you got to stay in my house. If you're going to stay in my house, you got to be this way. I ain't never had that. So I'm thankful for that. Um, somebody said, have I ever had a boyfriend? I had a couple. I had some boyfriends. It didn't last long because every time when it got to that part where one of them, they wanted, I just never wanted to get to that sexual part because I just wasn't in it. And that's how I realized that I really am, you know, gay. Like, one of my first kisses was from a dude, and his, it just turned me all the way off. When he kissed me, I just said, no. I just knew it. It just did absolutely nothing for me. And I said, yeah, nigga, you bitch, you gay. as fuck, okay? Um, when times get rough, what keeps you going? I know you've been through a lot and you still manage to laugh and smile. Y'all keep me going. Prayer keeps me going. God keeps me going. And the family that I do associate with who might be going through the same thing, we help each other out. Like, if you don't know, um, the anniversary of my uncle's passing, the second year anniversary, is coming up tomorrow on Thursday, the 29th. And, um, you know... We just huddling around, making sure everybody's okay. Yeah, I've been feeling a, feeling a way about it because, you know, it's a lot that's been going on. Um, my auntie's murder case about to go to trial and all that stuff, and we got to deal with that. So, yeah, I talk to God every fucking day, you know, and that helps. Sometimes when you feel like you can't really talk to nobody, God is always there to listen and just bear your soul. And that's what I do, you know. And if I really, really, really need to talk to somebody, I know I got um a couple of people that I can just call up and talk to them or whatever. But that's how I do. And then when I get on YouTube and doing these videos and sometimes, especially in this past week or so, my spirits have been down and I've been going through some shit. And I just get on here and make, you know, I do it for myself to be the funny, like with the Love and Hip Hop videos and stuff like that. I do it and all the impersonation is just to make myself laugh so i just won't wallow in my own grief or whatever that's going on so yeah i like doing the youtube to do that so that's that um what bothers you most people who openly spew hate or those who pretend to like you when they don't the ones that pretend to like you when they don't don't waste my time because I don't give a shit. If you don't like me, don't like me and move the fuck on. Don't try to befriend me to use me for something else. And then, you know, your true colors come out. But I can't stand people who spew hate either. But they putting it out there so they ain't lying about it. I mean, they ain't denying it. But it's worse when you trying to you, you claim you like a person, but then you really don't. Why? Why waste your time? Okay, move the fuck on. Don't don't play me because I'll cuss you out. Um, What's your favorite... <laughs> What's your favorite Beyonce, Aaliyah, and Janet Jackson song? Oh. oh my God. I love all of that catalog. I really fucking do. Okay, so. Off of B-Day. No, off of Dangerously in Love for Beyonce. My favorite song is Speechless and Signs. Signs, then Speechless, if you ask me. And then it's the um, duet that she did with um, Luther Vandross. Okay, so off of B-Day. Ugh. Ugh. Why y'all do this to me? 
I love everybody love irreplaceable. Mm, I like get me body. Get me body just get me going and all that shit. And listen to at the end I like that. Uh I also love resentment. I love resentment when she do it live. I just I just love that. Um what other album did she have? Sasha Fierce, Diva is one of my favorite songs. I can care less for the slow songs. Halo grew on me. Okay, I was never really here for single ladies, but it grew on me. But Diva and Video Phone and all that, you know, the up tempos, those are my favorite phones. I just like the vibe of it in the video because the Video Phone video, she was looking good as fuck. She was very fuckable. I was very much here for it. I was like, all right. And then four, to my honest, honest opinion, four, you know, she's that was when she was getting back to her R&B roots. So. My favorite songs on four, without a doubt, is In The Time. I See, I just can't pick a one time, one favorite, because I love that whole CD, like, In The Time, that is my shit, you know, and off of the new Beyonce album, it's a toss-up between Partition and, um, I love me some Jealous, and I like Blue, too. I do. I really do, for some reason, I do, and... For Aaliyah, Rock the Boat of her, um, the last CD that she actually brought out. And I care, Rock the Boat, I Care For You, um, what is it, Those Were The Days? One of those songs used to make me cry every time, or feel like I was gonna cry after she passed away. I just got so emotional, and it wasn't even nothing about, you know, death or anything. It was just the way that it sounded. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all need to stop. But I also like when um one of my favorite songs by Leah is when she redid Donnie Hathaway's Hard to Do. Ah, giving up is hard to do. That was my shit. I said, You actually trying to show us some vocals, bitch. You better do it. Um mm, you hear that? Anyway, sorry. Janet Jackson, I get so lonely anytime, any place, because you know any of her freaky shit that was really, really good. I love it. Um, my favorite, I can't even pick a favorite song. All right, from Rhythm Nation, that is my motherfucking song. Uh, Rhythm Nation has some hits though. Miss you much and all right and um, uh, damn, I just can't. Pleasure Principle, that was on control. I love that shit. Like, come on. But my favorite Janet Jackson album is the uh, Velvet Rope because the Velvet Rope, it just got me through a lot of stuff. You know, that bitch was depressed as fuck and she was happy and she was a freak bitch on the same time and she was giving out messages and I was all here for it. So I loved it. But um, what TV shows do you think needs to end aside from Basketball LA and the franchise in general? Basketball LA, um, they can if they was to give real love, love and hip hop New York, I really wouldn't care. Um... If they was to get rid of loving hip hop Hollywood, I really wouldn't care either. Um, but I get my most views on that. Y'all be loving them. I be cracking the fuck up. Bad Girls Club needs to fucking go. And we got two. They got two more seasons of that. I ain't even bothered to watch the first part of that reunion. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I was like, the twins ain't gonna be on here. And I seen a couple of clips of stuff, and I was just like, girl, I ain't got time. Tanisha, she irks the fuck out of me. She always has, but. It is what it is. Um, can you do vlogs on your days off from work? I could if I was interested enough. I'm like, I'm telling y'all, I just don't feel like I'm interested enough. I don't do shit. Like, bitch, I go to work. I be tired as fuck. I be going to work. And then I come home. And then I just chill out. So what y'all want me to put a video up of me just going like this? I'm watching TV, y'all. What y'all doing? Bitch, we'll do that shit on Periscope. I will live record on Periscope while I watch TV with y'all sometime. I'm I'm going to start doing that. Don't hold me to it, but I want to start doing that. Because sometimes I just be fucking tired. Um, Are you a jealous partner? <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> am I jealous? <laughs> I think we all got a little jealousy up in there. Like, you know, like, bitch, who the fuck? Oh, so you can go talk to that person? If you're talking about, so, oh, you can go kick it with that person, but you can't tell me and you can't do that. In that sense, a little bit, yes. But am I jealous? Like, oh, you know, 
who the fuck is that? And always, you know, just finding an issue to be jealous of. Nah, I ain't like that. But, you know, I have my moments where I be like, well, hmm, you can talk to that person, but you can't talk to me. And you can do this and you can't. Do you know, I've had that recently. Recently. We literally just got off a conversation and some bullshit like that. But, um, yeah. And, you know, we still good. You know, we going through our shit, but we good. Um, every couple do. So, hey, it is what it is. Y'all keep on saying, how y'all meet? Let me tell y'all how y'all meet. I met. Okay, first of all, YouTube, Facebook. She hit me up on Facebook one time and she was flirting with me and I didn't realize that's what was going on and it was like two years ago and then come back to the present time we've been together now for seven months and um we just started talking again and she was actually in Texas and she moved out here for a job or whatever and we just started talking more meeting up and you know kicking it and we vibe like I fuck with her vibe and she fucks with my vibe and it is what it is, and now we still here. It is what it is. Hopefully, 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 um, she'll be able to go to the blackout and everything be cool because when she was she was supposed to go to the blackout this past blackout, but when I say shit got so fucked up because she got sick and she had skin cancer, and um, they had scheduled, they wanted to do emergency surgery and go ahead and do the surgery as quick as they can. And that's why she couldn't come because the surgery got scheduled for 6 o'clock that morning, that Thursday before we were supposed to leave. Because we was going to drive out Friday morning. We was going to drive out and that didn't happen. So that's why she wasn't there. You know, and that's why all the confusion and stuff was going on. And it's just a lot. But, um, yeah, that's, that's that. I don't want to talk no more about it. That's kind of sad. Um, y'all heard my voice get all sensitive and shit, like, yeah, you know, babe, it's like, <laughs> bitch, I got a heart. <laughs> I got a heart. I ain't know I had one, but bitch, I got a heart. <laughs> you just gotta find that one person that'll pull it out, and she did. But, um, cause the bitch be up in here like, girl. <laughs> anyway, keeping up. The Walking Dead, y'all play too goddamn much. We don't know who dead. Is Glenn dead or is Nicholas dead? If Glenn is really dead, I'm going to be really, really pissed. You know, I was all up in my feelings and distraught about it. You know, because it felt like a family member had just really... A family member that was really close, that was like a best friend to you, you know? Not only are we blood, but we best friend and you're going to kill him. Nicholas should have been dead. Y'all should have... Glenn, you should have killed him when he tried to play you um last season okay fuck all that giving second chances and all that shit not only did he try he killed himself and pulled you down in the process it better be nicholas guts and glory all up on that screen not glenn's okay hmm. we'll see next week well this sunday um what keeps you motivated to doing youtube because it's a hobby and it breaks up my the monotony of my day and i just love interacting with y'all because you know it can be time consuming but not really you don't have to put up long videos you can just get on here and just you know on your free time and just talk for a minute and then put up whatever you want to put up but it's 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 it's, it's therapeutic because i like interacting with y'all and seeing what y'all crazy asses gotta say and y'all know y'all gotta be just as crazy and just as shady to be following me because hmm, we be on the same track sometimes but um what was your major in college? I, when I first entered college, I was a computer science major, and then I switched it to a business major, business, business administration. That's what I got my bachelor in. Do you plan on moving? If so, where? At this current time, no, I don't plan on moving, but I'm not against moving. If I was to ever give a, get a job opportunity, it, it's nothing for me to just say, hey, bitch. Um, give me a few seconds so I can find a place and I'll be there. If you're going to put me up until I find a place, yeah, I'll be there. You know, it's nothing. Nothing is really holding me back. If my girl was down with it and we cool with it because she a teacher, you know, you can find a job anywhere if you're a teacher. Fine, you do it. Um, what do you think of internet bloggers getting together and having an online round table, um, show like the real or the view? First of all, I don't watch neither one of those shows, but I'm not against it. If y'all go back to, 
if you watch the Scorpion show, and I like when um that video when Kevin, Dan, and Diggy and Mikhail was on there, and they had their little round table. That was cute. But the fact of the matter is, you have to have some YouTubers who actually get along and you know actually stay in the same city or whatever to get that popping. But that'd be a good idea. I'm I wouldn't be against it, unless you know you can have some Skype stuff and you know everybody do a Skype video or whatever. You just gotta have the right YouTubers who mesh well and everybody like, you know. Um how do you find the courage to do something that you're not used to doing? I really gotta keep on saying myself that you know you're getting older and you only got one life to live. So go out there and make the best of it. You can't keep on holding yourself back because you in fear of something or you're not comfortable with doing something. You got to force yourself to jump out of that comfort zone. And you don't have to just go ahead and jump head first right away. You know, do take little steps to just ease yourself into doing, you know, first do some small stuff before you work your way up to the big stuff. It takes time, you know. Um, who must you see in concert that you haven't already seen? I want to see Flo a Tree in concert. I'm mad that I missed it. I have not seen Tony in concert because shit, you know, girl, they, the last day that she did talking about some Chicago, it wasn't no fucking Chicago. It was in Indiana. I wasn't finna drive out there. Well, first of all, I don't even drive. Somebody asked why do I always take Uber? Because I don't drive and I don't do public transportation out here in Chicago. There you go. Um... And I no, I still ain't got my license, but I'm finna work on that. I keep on saying that. And that's because every time I keep on saying that I'm finna get my license, I'm finna go ahead and do it. It was always something that popped up that fucked up. First I got into one accident and then after that when my knee got better and it was always my knee that got messed up because it always got hit in the back of the seat or on the floor. The second car accident, it rammed into the second floor. The first car accident, it was my right knee. The second car accident, which was like a couple of months right after the first one, it was my left knee. And when both of them fucked up and got, you know, finally got okay, then I fractured my right knee. And, you know, the right leg and all that shit, that's the your driving leg and all that. And uh, all of this shit, after being in the accidents and stuff, I guess I got to get my mind right because I be too, it's, it's a mental thing. I just, mm, I'm not in no hurry, you know. And my girlfriend be like, you, I got a car and you could have been driving my car around. Just first of all, I am not Jody from Baby Boy. And I ain't finna be come picking you up from work and shit. But okay, you know, it is what it is. Um, Yeah, I need to see Tony. I need to see Flo Tree. I need to see, um, oh, I seen Janet. I'm about to go see her again. I seen Beyonce. Um, I want to see JoJo. JoJo finna go on tour. I have to see Missy Elliott. Uh, I just want to see all the great. I want to see Adele when she go on tour, bitch. Uh, I want to see Lady Gaga again. Um, hmm. I just want to see all the soul singers like Leela James and Lettucey and Chrisette Michelle and, um, any other soulful ass, Layla Hathaway and uh, Avery Sunshine and, you know, all these powerful voices. I just want to see them live because they sound good. When voices like that sound good on their CDs, but when they do it live, oh, Jesus. I like want to go see Patti LaBelle before she go. I have to go to a Patti LaBelle concert. I really do. Um, would I ever do a meet and greet in Chicago? Most certainly I would when I get feel I'm at that point, you know, that it's a lot of people out here that would want to come out and, you know, see me. Like, I don't understand why, but, you know, yeah. Um, What's my view on death? Like, what goes through your mind when you lose someone close? What helps you through the grieving process? The only person that I really lost that was really, really close to me was my uncle. My aunt, yeah, she was murdered, but I wasn't close to her. And um, my uncle, it hurt. It hurt like hell. Like, that was a hurt that I never experienced because I never experienced death before my uncle two years ago. And to be somebody so close, my uncle was my best friend, and he was like my gay brother, okay? And that was the person that, you know, I did damn near everything with and always included me and stuff and got me out there to do stuff and introduced me to a lot of stuff. And to have him not here, it was just a blow to my system. And it just threw me off so bad. 
and I did get into a depression. And um, because I got a type of family that we don't really talk about our feelings and stuff like that. So, like I said previously, I just got on YouTube and started doing some videos. And, you know, um, a lot of the people reached out that even from my YouTube family, from my Twitter family, whatever, they reached out. I did have some friends or whatever that I um, talked to a lot if I needed it and I always check in. But I try not to just let myself be idle because if I did, I really, 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 really would have got depressed about it. And um, I just kept it moving. I don't like to speak about death. I don't like to think about it. Um, but if it really gets to the point that you don't, you know, you just got to open up your mouth and talk. Don't hold it in. Okay. Don't be afraid to cry about it if you need to cry about it. Um, and that's what I did. That's what I did. Um, favorite, <laughs> favorite Jodeci track, Feenin, Feenin, and, um, every freaking day, and every freaking night, I wanna be on your back so freaking tight, that is my shit, that the whole in me love that, so that's my shit right there, and come and talk to me, that, that, and I love when they redid, um, Stevie Wonder song, um, who is your favorite artist of 2015? Bitch, I don't, I don't have a favorite. Okay, well, my favorite, my fave, Jen Jackson, okay? But that's one of my top five albums. I'm so here for Adele coming back, bitch. Adele came and stormed, and she said, rolling in the deep. No, bitch, we finna say hello, okay? Hello from the other side. I must have called your ass a thousand times, you know, trying to apologize. Bitch, come on, Adele. Come the fuck on and break all these goddamn records. Anybody coming out in November, y'all better come out before the 20th because Adele is going to bring out 25 and she will be at number one probably for the rest of the, um, 2015 and 2016. She's probably going to be up there for number one for a while. I'm just saying. But, um, I don't have a favorite artist besides Janet. Like, 2015 was pretty dull to me. I had some good, they had some good albums, you know. Jasmine Sullivan, K. Michelle came out with a good album. I'm actually looking forward to K. Michelle's third album. Surprisingly, because the second album I was really feeling. Um, Let us see, he had a good album. Like, it's just so much. And I just can't pick or choose. Y'all got to stop with this favorite shit. <laughs> and here go. Favorite food. Well, I like pizza and I like chicken. A nigga and me like chicken. Fried chicken. What's your favorite day of the week and why? Friday. Because it's the end of the week. That means that this is my last day of work. And I get to go chill after this day for the next, at least two more days. Okay? Um. What is the craziest dream that you ever had? And when you woke up, how did you feel about it? I had a dream a few months ago that threw me off, um... It was around my uncle's birthday. And I had a dream that somebody was knocking at the door. And I went down stairs to open up the door. And all I heard was this laughter. And it was my uncle's laughter. And I, it, literally him laughing, but he was not there. And I didn't know what that meant. And it threw me off and scared the hell out of me at the same time. And it made me sad all at the same time. And I just, it was on my mind for a while because I didn't understand what it meant. And... I still don't understand what it meant. But, um, and it was crazy because usually when I do have dreams, I don't remember them. But I remember that one. And I still do. Like, what was the tri most trifling thing <laughs> you ever did to someone? It could be someone close or an acquaintance. Um, I wouldn't call it trifling. I mean, you may call it trifling, but I got into it with somebody who was playing me, and I just put it out there, well, bitch, you know, it is what it is. I don't care, and I was just using you for a fucking ride. You know, you want to try to say something that hurt me, so let me hurt you back and say, bitch, you ain't shit. You a fucking hoe, and um, I was just using your ass for a ride to get around to certain stuff. That shit, you know, and I said, hmm. I, I will go into details about what I said on that, but that, mm -mm, I'm not going to put that all out there, but that was one of the most parts that stuck out, bitch. I was just using your ass for a motherfucking ride. It is what it is. What is my favorite color? I don't even think that's trifling because, bitch, you was playing me, and therefore, I just put it out there. 
because I realized at one point that you were trying to play a game, so therefore, I'm going to just use your ass for a fucking ride. <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite color? Blue. For the last question for this video, I might do a part two, might not, because this is just the question that was on Facebook. If you can go back in time, where would you go in your lifetime? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I just stay, and because the past is the past, why would I go back to the past when you can't change it? I move forward and you know, make sure my future is good and continue forward and do the stuff that and make my future better and live in my present. That's what I do. But I will see y'all later. Just a 50 minute video. Um, any more questions, any more things? I might do a shout out video, put, push y'all on some new YouTubers or whatever. Um, and yeah, I'll see y'all later. This probably be a Thursday morning because I'm going to just edit it and put it up Thursday. And yeah, excuse me, American Horror Story, Scandal if it comes on, and How to Get Away with Murder if it comes on will be Thursday night. I'll see y'all later. Peace.